Yeah. Oh. Oh my gosh. And the workshop's just starting and we just got here and I just managed Fantastic. to connect up with Wi-Fi before before we start unloading everything. It's amazing, isn't it? Technology. Just love it. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. When it works. When it works. <laughs> yeah. That's great. Yeah, it's fun. But I great. think I better go and do stuff yeah. anyway. Have a good session. I'm sorry Thank not you to be there. Thank you very much, Alison for showing your <laughs> face. Bye. 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 So, good evening, Hannah. I don't know you. Good evening. Hello. Hello. Where are you I'm from? one of the Scottish viol players. All oh, right. Good evening. Oh. I'm in Edinburgh. <laughs> good. And then All Felicity. Right. Good evening. I see you. Sally. Yes. Good evening. Good evening. And this Cass. Hello, Cass. Hi. Yes. Hi. 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 <laughs> Good, Alison and Roy just showed up, uh, and but they need to go to work now. So I think we're still waiting for a little while. I just move the time. So, so hello, Jürgen. Guten Abend. <laughs> yeah, sehr schön. Hello, good evening. Yeah, yeah good enough. Geht es dir gut, Jürgen? Ja, es geht gut. Ja, yeah, gut. Sehr oh, schön. Leider schön. kann ich zu deinem, zu deinem Kurs nicht kommen, weil ich Im, im, ja, in Oktober, ja, im Ostern. Ja. Es ist ein bisschen eine ungünstige Zeit. Ich habe den relativ kurzfristig bekommen. Mal sehen, wie viel sich dafür interessieren. Ja, ich gebe, ja. gebe eine Woche später in Belgien einen anderen Kurs, der schon ausgebucht ist. Ja, da, da, bin ich, da treffen wir uns dann wieder. Ah, dann treffen wir uns da, genau. In Drongen. In Drongen, genau. Ja, genau. Prima. Ja, das, das ist ein bisschen, der, der April ist sehr, der April ist gleich voll. Ja, ja, ja. ja. Yes. Ja. So, yes, we're getting slowly more people, I think. Uh, Mary, uh, Mary, you keep an eye on the time, because I think my watch is about two minutes quick, I don't know. It's still, still before seven, I think. Huh? Eight o'clock. Yes. Ich gehe mal raus. Eight o'clock. Ja, <laughs> Ciao. Good. Catherine, yes. You're also cold. You look cold, Catherine. It's cold up here. <laughs> yeah, here, where my place is also quite cold at the moment. So. It's the North Sea out there. <laughs> yes, yeah, and a cold, cold wind, huh? Cold wind. I think it's seven o'clock now, so leave a few minutes from now. All right, another minute and then we can start. Another couple. All right, good then. A couple of minutes, good. Yes, there's still people coming, yes. Lindsay, I think is getting there. Harriet. Yes, hello, good evening. Pet, hello, Pet, good evening. Are we getting slowly? Getting slowly there, great. Mm -hmm. The picture is changing according to uh, who is joining us. It's quite a colorful screen. I think you can see all, all the old people. My camera is uh, playing up again. I'm afraid. I hope it won't happen too often. I don't know. So, then I need to do it again. So, I'm back again. And I need to put the original sound on. Yes, original sound is on, I hope. Original sound is... The original sound is on. So Mary, just give me feedback if the sound is not right, then I need to change it because it's quite distracting, turning in off and on with the camera, not working. Hello, Mark, good evening, Gary, good evening, good evening. Hello, Jackie, from Stockholm and Göteborg is there. Hello, Alice. Hello, Christopher, good evening. Alice, you seem to have the same mm -hmm. problem with the camera as I have, um, but uh, I think you can hear me, I hope. 
So I think we getting slowly ready. Just a moment, just a moment. I come back in a second. So I think we could start, Mary, everybody ready? Good. Good evening, everybody. First of all, I have to say a few things about uh, in why uh, Ibi is not here. He is normally hosting the session. This means uh, when we have questions later, I would uh, ask you to uh, um, ask them in person, not write them in the chat box, because it's for me quite uh, difficult to read the chat box at the same time when I try to um, demonstrate our, our, our exercises. So I will give you uh, opportunities to uh, have a question, raise a question uh, live uh, in several times in the session. The other point I would like to mention is please, uh, if, if do any donations to the Gamba Society to support the cost for this uh, session, it would be great if you can donate some money, please. Now, I'm saying also thank you to the Gamba Society to give, give me the opportunity to speak about some uh, matters about how we can in, in, increase our sound on the wild. Today we will speak about what bow weight shall I use for this? How different uses of weights will influence my sound on the wild? How is my approach to this matter? Do I play and see what will happen? Or do I think and plan what to do so I can produce the effect sound I would like to hear. It's quite important that we're not just starting to play and are surprised what happens. We should know in advance what sort of sound we would like to produce. Therefore it's extremely important to get the balance of our arm and bow weight right. We all know the situation that we sometimes produce a very sc scratchy sound or that we play so quietly that we can hardly hear us. Let us find out why. Do we have the right strings on the instrument, the right gauge, enough tension on the bow hair and enough rosin? Is the room we are in a reasonable warm and not too damp? If we can say yes to all these points, then we need to analyze what we are doing with our arm. What are we trying to achieve? A pleasant, responding, flexible sound which is carrying our emotions into the last corner of the room. The only way to get close to this is by using the right amount of weight. What weights are we talking about? We are talking about the forearm weight, the hand weight. In my case, it's about 2.5 kilo, the forearm and the hand, 2.5 kilo. Everybody can find out how heavy your bow, uh, weight is. You have a kitchen scale. Try to lay your arm on it. I went to the post office to be quite precise some years ago. And then we have the bow weight. We mustn't forget the bow weight. It varies between 50 and 100 gram, depending on the size of instrument you play. I'm mentioning the bow weight because you might find situations that even the bow weight is too much for the sound you would like to produce. And we will find some situation later in our exercises. I don't think that we need to put pressure on top of these weights on our violin. The skill lays in how to get the right proportion of it onto our strings. Now, if you are alone, most of you are alone, but if you have a partner, you can ask them to lift up your forearm, or you can do it by yourself. Lift up your forearm, ideally, as you can see, my wild is not between my legs now. You can, perhaps you can do it also with the wild. Lift up your forearm, feel the weight of your forearm, and then at some point, let the form drop. 
Again, if you take your forearm up, as you can see, my, uh, not very clearly, my elbow is not sticking out. My elbow is, elbow is hanging down. Lift up the forearm, and at some point, take the supporting hand away, and it falls down. A few times. Can we do it again? It's nice to see that nobody ends up like this. So really let the forearm drop to the floor. So can we let the arm hang still? And I quite like that everybody lifts up the right shoulder. So high as you can, the right shoulder. And then drop your shoulder down. Careful, this might be painful if it's too abrupt. Again, lifting it slowly up. And let it drop. Now, I quite like to do this with the shoulder again, but this time we're lifting the shoulder up. And in the same way as we lifted the shoulder up, we let it slowly go down. I don't know if you can feel the muscles you, you are using by doing this, but you definitely see the and feel the effect. Up, the shoulder up, and slowly down until you can't go lower anymore. Now, can we do the same now with the right arm and forearm? We lift the arm up. The arm, not the shoulder, not sideways. We just lift up the forearm in front of us and let it slowly down until it's really hanging. You don't need to support the right arm with your other hand to lift it up. Just do it without support and feel the muscles you may use for, by doing this. And then down again. Until it's really next to you relaxed. Now the same exercise I would like you to do, but if, if you can, take a pencil in your hand. Hold the pencil. We lift up your, if you are, I give you time to get a pencil. When you have a pencil, then lift, pick, lift up your forearm with your left hand. Let this pencil stick not too far out that you don't hit your leg with it. And at some point, let the arm drop down, but don't lose the pencil. Again. What I would like to achieve is that the arm drops it the same way as it was without the pencil. And we let it drop. I hope it feels the same. So last time. And we let the arm drop. Thank you. Now we can put the pencil to the side and take our instrument and the bow. <clears throat> yes, I can see everybody is muted. I was uh, reminded to mention this, but uh, everybody is muted. Thank you very much. So, for how we transfer the forearm weight onto our string is over the middle finger, over the middle finger onto the hair. This is the middle finger takes the forearm weight. As you can see, I'll hold the tip on the bow with my index finger on the left, from the left hand and then let's slowly rest the bow on the third string from the above. Third string, this would be on a tenor and an A, on the bass, while or descant, and then the E string. Take the supporting left finger away and have just the middle finger transfer the weight from your forearm and hand. As you can see, I'm not holding the stick with my index finger or thumb. Just the weight transferred over the middle finger to the point where the hair touches the string. I don't want that you make a sound note yet, just feel the weight. Now, if you want to reduce the weight, we can't just lift up. If you just lift up, that bow will lose her right position. 
I quite like now that you use the index finger and the thumb supporting, gently supporting the stick and the ring finger, which is very important, comes underneath from to the bow, bow here, underneath. So can we hang still with our up forearm weight on the mid, uh, middle finger? We take the weight away by putting, using the ring finger underneath and lifting the weight away, lifting the bow up, so we have no weight on the string. Now we're going back slowly onto the string. Take the ring finger, the, the ring finger away, hang the forearm weight over the middle finger onto the string. Make sure that we don't hang like this, and when we have no weight on, end up like this. The bow should be always as a starting point in the right angle to the string you're playing. Regardless if it's the high string or the low string, where we start, the starting point is always a right angle from the bow to the string. It might look a bit distorted because of the angle where you sit. So they have asked you to do it on the third string from the top, then you can see really clearly in your picture on your screen if you have the bow in the right angle to the string. So adding or subtracting the weight should not change the angle, the position from the stick or the hair to your string. Not that we play with weight like this or no weight like this. It's very important. You could uh, use a music stand as a guidance in front of you and be parallel with the, with the bow stick to the bottom of the music stand. Or if you have floorboards and you see the lines on the floorboard, find some reference points that you, on the middle strings E on C string or A on F string, that you are in the, in the right angle towards your string, which is essential. Now, I would like that we put the bow on the string, have enough weight, and as soon as we try to make a note, I'm quite at the tip of the bow. If, as soon as we try to make a note, we release most of the bow weight and move to the left. I demonstrate once. Do it again. I hope you can see it. I rest, I'm resting with the bow hair on my string. Have a lot of weight, a lot of weight on this point. As soon as I move, I release. So can everybody please do this? So you go quite to the tip, resting your bow on the string, have the arm weight over the middle finger, transfer the weight to the string. As soon as you move to the left side, the ring finger takes a lot of weight away. Quite a long, medium loud note. Can we do it for a few times, please? Just in a push bow. Take the bow away, sitting down, sitting down. As soon as you move, release the weight. Always in a push, push bow at the moment. Now, I think if you get the, uh, the proportion right and make the synchron with releasing the weight, you will find that as soon as you move your bow, a sound, a pleasant sound will appear. Uh, often when we play, I hear this, a sliding at the beginning, because the contact wasn't done. So we must make sure we create the contact by having enough weight from our forearm and hand onto the string. I often people say just relax your forearm, just relax your bow on the string. I think it's not just a question of relaxation. Relaxation is something which can turn into a limpness. I, I would say we must always aim for keeping the control uh, so we could react to different demands. So if we just relax, where is our control? We must keep control. A just letting loose is too passive 
and can end up in a town with no intention, no, no intention to reach. We want to hear a town which reaches our ears or the ears from our players we are doing or the audience. So it is a controlled relaxation on the hair from the arm weight and this transferred to the string. Another picture to transfer the weight might help that you think you want to rub something out with your bow hair on the string. You rub. So you want to rub. Or you hang like a sloth on that branch with your bow. You hang. This is of course too much, but this is just to feel the weight. Now, when we do the same in the back bow, we, can we do the same exercise with the back bow? We're resting our bow hair quite close to our hand. And as soon as we move to the right, we release the weight and the ring finger becomes very important for this. Weight on, release and move. Again. I'm deliberately making leaps into the air so that I'm sitting slowly back onto the string without really controlled sitting down, weight on, release weight and move backwards. Again please, sitting on the string. Good, thank you. I said we do it at the tip or we start in, in quite into our hand. At the tip we must be careful that we don't go too far to the tip. Uh, if it's too far to the tip, the tension here of your bow hair is very very high and has no flexibility and it's very hard to get a clear uh, gentle beginning there. So a, a tiny bit of a uh, gap I would leave so there is some flexibility. Generally speaking, when we use the bow weight, the position on the bow, the position also on the string, which I mention later a tiny bit, we never should go to an extreme where we can't go further. Always have a little reserve, then it's more flexible, the U-turn. So perhaps two, three centimeters away from the tip on the base bow when we start. Put your bow down, two, three centimeters from the tip, please. Wait on and then move. What needs to happen both ways in the back bow as well. As soon as you move your bow, a sound must come. All the time. There is not a note which shouldn't start like this. In the middle of the bow, it's perhaps easier. But we need to make sure that we have enough tension on the hair. I don't know, I can't see how high your tension is on your bow. Many people I find playing with a very low tension. Uh, I deliberately have quite a few bow hairs, about 92 bow hairs on my bow. Means I have to change the bow hair quite often because it's locked up very easily and uh, quicker. But the clarity with a higher tension and less bow hair is much greater than a, a, a bunch of hair and with a low, low tension. You want clarity. Simpson says the bass line should sound respond like a violin. How can we achieve this when we have a very floppy hair? So can we put the bow in the middle of the in the middle of the bow on the string and try the same exercise? A first push and then back. On back bow, stop, on push bow. Again, you can join me by doing this. I'm on an E, still I'm on an open string. I hope you hear every time a very clear beginning, sometimes more accented, sometimes less.
and the angle is in 90 degrees. Thank you. This is just uh, to start uh, thinking about what happens with the weight which is transferred, transferred via the middle finger and reduced by using the ring finger to take it away. Now I would like to go with you through about 10 exercises to explore how we can use different ways to find the best balance between weight and effect. So we did uh, uh, open strings. We could uh, explore now different um, strings, the lower strings, the higher strings. You will notice when you play higher strings, it, they behave differently than the lower strings. When we play the higher strings and want to have a clear note, we need to make sure that we go a bit closer to the bridge. Can we try it now on a top string and a push bow? And it's quite uh, a challenge because the arm is far away from our body. Try to have the right angle towards your string. Rest your bow on it. The middle finger transports the weight over the hair to this point where the bow hair touches the string. And then we start. Three, four. Again, he's resting on the tip. Three, four. Again. Three, four. The same now with the back bow, which will be a bit, bit harder. We go quite close to our hand. After three, four, we're starting together, please. Three, four. I think you notice you hardly need to add knowingly weight. The weight is already there. It's very gentle. Three, four. Again, sitting on the string. Three, four. Thank you. Now we're going to the lowest string. Doing a, starting a tip, the lowest string. I would uh, uh, advise to go a bit further away from the bridge. And let us try together after three, four. A lot of weight on the lowest string. Mine is an A, I have a seven string. You, if you have a D, it's fine. Go to the lowest string. Um, tenors, yeah, it won't sound very nice to my A. Three, four. Sitting on the string. Three, four. And another time. Make sure the weight from your forearm is transported via the middle finger. I hope you can see my middle finger is quite heavily involved. And as soon as I move, my ring finger takes the weight away. Three, four. Even on the low thick strings, there's immediately a sound to be noticed. The same, please, in the back bow. Three, four. Again, sitting on the string. Three, four. A very nice round sound I hope you can produce like this. Now we come to the next uh, situation uh, uh, playing uh, on the stopped note. We can go to the A string on everybody, anybody, everybody's while and play a C. Can we put the finger down on C and starting in the uh, upper third of the bow in, with a push bow after three, four? Shh, is good, is good. Three, four. Can we do it again? Before you play the note, try to imagine the sound which, should, which you would like to hear. It should be similar to an open string. Three, four. Again. Hanging your arm weight onto the hair. As soon as we move forward, 
be released the weight. And the last time. Now in the back bow, please. On the same note. Three, four. Sitting down. Three, four. And the last time. Not too quick with your bow speed. Quite slow. Three, four. So, now the same in the lower strings. We can go the lower string, second finger on if you like, or the second lower string, which sounds um, okay to my C. Three is done to you on a tip. Again, further away from the bridge, a lot of weight, and then after, as soon as we move, the weight is taken away. Three, four. Aim always for a sound as soon as you move. A beautiful sound. Three, four. Yeah. Try to keep the arm down, not, not up in the air. Everything is hanging. Three, four. And last time, put the bow down, please. After three, and now in the back bow, please. Resting the bow on the string. Three, four. Another time. Three, four. And the last time. Three, four. I think it's time to find out what happens if we don't release the weight. I would demonstrate this on an open string. So we, the weight I'm speaking about is um, what i done all the time now, even in the sort of soft beginning. I will keep it on the string now. This you would hear. So I have a lot of weight before I start a note. On the lower string more weight than on the higher string. Can you try this please? Keep the weight in and uh, see what sound will come out. We won't like it, but it's the weight that you have to feel and connection to the weight we're using. Put the string and put the bow on the string and we move after three, four together. And maintain the weight. Three, four. I'm not pressing. I'm using some of my forearm weight. Three, four. In the back bow, please, the same in the back bow. And maintain the weight. Three, four. And again another back bow with the weights maintaining in. Three, four. Thank you. Now, of course, the wire could cope with this weight. How? By increasing the speed. So the speed and the weight is always related and we need to find the right balance to get the sound we want to. So my picture is going crazy again, so I need to just disconnect my camera. This is um, sadly necessary. I will come back in a second. Just Please, uh, Mary, if my sound is not so good, please let me know because I hope I did this right sound again. Good. Now, I would like... Excuse me. I don't know this. I bought a new camera. Okay. And origin sound on. Now, I quite like that we experience now how we can play with this weight we just left after we started. So, 
What is necessary, of course, I mentioned already, we need to change the speeds. Let us start again on the third string from the top. So there's an E or A string on the tenors. Have, have the weight in the bow, uh, from your arm in the bow hair onto the string. And as soon as we move, we release a tiny bit, but then come back to the weight. Again, I have the weight in. I release a tiny bit of weight as soon as I move and then put the weight in ahead when I, when I was sticking in, like, the, like now. After four, three, four. It's the same weight we just had when it was so stretching. Same again, and you see how quick the bow goes. We might need this sort of sound quality by using a lot of bow and a lot of weight. Now we do the other extreme. We want to play a really, really quiet note. So I try to demonstrate now a very quiet note by maintaining the same speed, but hardly any weight. Is this, this is a sound we don't want. What happens? We sliding over the string without any contact. We don't give the string the time to get into motion. So it's the same. What always needs to happen is we have to assign a weight on the string. And as soon as we move, we release the weight to hardly anything, but we play with a very slow bow speed. I hope you can hear my tone, which is very quiet. Uh, can we do it again? So, a pianissimo note, which starts always, like every note, with a slight digging in into the string. As soon as we move, we release, and we have hardly any bow weight. I would go so far to say we have perhaps 20 gram of weight on the string. This means no arm weight at all, and from my 75 or 80 gram bow weight, we need to take 60 gram out. So we left with 20 gram. How is this possible? By using our ring finger. So no arm weight and um, reduced bow weight. Can we all do it together, please? So long as we can, very slow. Um, I'm, I'm luckily, it's, it's, at the moment it seems to work. Three, four. Twenty gram. And once more, please. We're starting the tip. You will notice that we need to go perhaps a bit further away from the bridge to make it easier for us. A tiny bit further from the bridge. Aim for a beautiful piano note. Three, four. Thank you. This is not easy to do, so you need to have time to to learn the, the right response to the weight. Now, can we start the same exercise with the back bow, which is even harder because everything seems to be heavier closer to the hand, which we might like to use at some point. So on the back bow, we're having a tiny bit of weight onto the string, release the weight with our um, ring finger and play a piano note. Three, four. See how long you can play. Can we do it again, please? Three. Make sure the elbow is hanging, not sticking out. Thank you. Three, four.
Thank you. I see very, very good efforts. And this is, has nothing to do with the limp uh, loosening of all muscles. It's a very controlled uh, um, balance between weight and speed. So can we do it for the last time, please, with uh, starting quite to the hand and keep it so long as possible without stopping, without stopping the sound, without stopping the bow motion. Three, four. I think some of you never played a long, uh, not so long as just now. So this is all possible. Of course, do we need such a soft note? There are, of course, the different shadings. Um, I uh, aimed, I think I mentioned this before some time ago, um, in the Bach Sonatas, the first one, uh, when we have the 18 quaver long notes, uh, most white players change the bow on these notes. I was aiming for on one bow. It's a good challenge. So if you would like to take this piece uh, and learn to play this on one note, it is possible. Um, it's, yeah, it's possible. Now, we played now notes on a stop and open string. What I find very often um, very disturbing is when we not adjusting our bow weight and bow speed, but mainly bow weight, um, when we can across an open string in a beautiful line. How often are we playing from stop note to open string to stop notes? So I would like to demonstrate something now without adjusting my bow weight if I come to an open string or a stopped note. Yeah, and just listen, uh, my, this while is quite forgiving, uh, so I'm quite lucky, but uh, open strings often blur out and this is what we want to, vermine, to, to avoid. I will now play without adjusting the, the bow speed and bow weight. <laughs> find the open string blurs out unusually much according to the stop notes. So we could try playing the stop, the, 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 the stop notes harder or we could try to play the open string softer. I think uh, I would advise, um, try for now to play the open string softer. How can we play the open string softer? By reducing our arm weight. So I try to demonstrate this and then we can throw it uh, and do it together. So if I think if you would have closed your eyes, you might have not heard an open or stopped string. So can we try this all together? Any um, as I did on the D string, perhaps on the D string is good for everybody. Then, so then you have the same note as I'm playing. After four, please. Three, four. Yeah, I didn't say what you were aiming to. So can we play it first without adjusting the bow weight? Just keep, maintain the same bow weight, same speed, and see how the open string, uh, string is responding uh, when you come to it. So, yeah. so without adjusting, please. Three, four. try to adjust our bow weight when we come to the open string so it definitely is not overpowering the stop strings. Same again. Three, four. Sure. Sorry, no, you keep going, please. Oh, yes, keep going. Good. Now, can we um, make a whole scale uh, from C to C? And we will come over two different, uh, three different open strings. Let us try to 
in bed the open strings in the same sound and uh, sound quality as the stop strings. Each note two beats long, please, and use open strings, not stop strings, if you can. Three, four. <laughs> I don't make crescendo, decrescendo, I'm aiming for making each note identical. It's all about being in control about the sound and weight uh, um, proportion. Can we do it once more, please? And we play the top note twice, I'm sorry, I forgot to say. Same again, please. Three, four. So I think you noticed uh, with less weight uh, coming to the open string, the sound will be very similar to the stop string. The other exercise you could do that we play the stop strings more open and the, and the, uh, like the open strings. Um, experiment with this sort of uh, scale playing. Now I'm seeing the time, perhaps I should give very quickly the opportunity for some questions and then I come back to my other exercises. So if anybody would like to ask a question, please unmute yourself uh, and otherwise be carrying on. Anybody would like to ask a question at this point? We have another possibility to end in the end of the session. Peter. Yes. Um, I'm finding if I give the bow weight or get the bow weight, I get a bit of a tension in this bit of tension in this part of my forearm. Is that normal? No, no. <laughs> no, you should not have, when you play the violin, there should be no tension in any part of your body ever. Uh, and uh, uh, I'm, I'm lucky that I played for many years without any problems. Uh, so um, something is working. So if you have tension, then you may hold the bow with your fingers too hard. Ah. As, I said, as I said at the beginning, also, when we play with our arm weight on and the, during the note, we can take index finger and thumb away. <coughs> So there is no possibility to create a tension if you have this uh, index finger on thumb away. I play often notes without index finger on thumb. I just use them to hold the stick not falling down. The most resonating note is achieved without index finger on thumb. Yeah, good. I think we could perhaps go on the, uh, yeah. If, if nobody wants to ask another question. Yeah. At the end of the session will be more time again. Good, so uh, now this was a scale including open strings. Now if we uh, play in a higher register going to the seventh fret, we need to adjust the bow tension, uh, the bow weight as well. So if we can play very slowly uh, from say on the A string, A string, uh, a scale up to the last fret, I demonstrate A major. I'm trying not to adjust the bow speed. I just try to adjust the bow weight to produce throughout this scale to the seventh fret with one shifting one one from A to C sharp from B to C sharp one one. Um, without any crescendo or decrescendo, without changing speed, just aiming for the same sound and tone quality. How to achieve this is by adding or subtracting weight when you go in the higher register or come back to a lower register. Can we do it together? And then we can, then we can try to speak about what we had to change. After four, three, each note, two beats, please. Three, four. Same again, we have 
thumb shifting with the first finger to the C sharp. Same again, we're all on the A string, please. Three, four. <laughs> notice when you started you had hardly any bow weight on the open A, I hope, hardly any weight and throughout the scale to the seventh fret we increased in weight so that we have still a purity on the on the seventh fret, a purity in the sound. Very similar to open A, so I played the seventh fret, I played the A. If you play these notes after each other you will feel the difference of the weight use you need to use to maintain or to reach, achieve the same sound. Now um, I need to be a bit quicker, I'm running out of time. So I just uh, yeah, touch some of my other exercises, double stops that we come across um, and quite often. Double stops is not a question, not necessarily a question of adding more weight. It's really a question of positioning your bow here on the string. So when we play double stops, uh, make it very easy. Two open strings. Say um, we have all D and A, D and A tenors as well. D and A double stops. Um, can we play it together? Starting with a push bow, each note two beats, and then a back bow. Try to have some contact before you start with having some weight from your arm on this place and release. Bow strings should be the same volume. Three, four. Thank you again. Same volume, please. Three, four. play two strings at the same time by adding more weight than necessary. The sound should be like you play one, one string, not more weight. Um, I quite like to, because of the next step I would like to de demonstrate is that you play in a top string um, in, for each note another, another finger. I demonstrate quickly. String uh, one zero one two four and back again. Can we do it all together? And both notes have the same volume, please. Three four. Thank you. So the next step, I need to uh, cut it short. The next step is that we highlight the top string. So then we have more weight on the top string and less weight on the lower string. Um, I demonstrate. So you heard a softer bottom string on the quite a present top string. Can we try this together, please? Three, three, four. same exercise but be playing a very loud lower note and the top note is the top melody is very softly please three four yeah can we do it again so the top melody we hardly hear but we hear a lot of the lower notes once more please three four yeah, it, 
this is a quite a big challenge to be so precise with the uh, use of your weight on the string you want to highlight. Something to explore as well. Now we have um, trills. When we come to trills, the weight of the bow should be not lighter. When we play trills, we need to maintain the contact. I just demonstrate. <laughs> steps at once now I need to jump so I make a crescendo and decrescendo throughout the trills by releasing weight and taking weight away so can we then try it please this is um, say A and D string so we trill on E with the second finger on F I demonstrate once more starting on F and playing A at the same time <laughs> After four, three, four. So the quick movements with your left fingers should not negative influence the bow weight or bow weight use. Make sure that this is always yeah, sort of independent but responding to each other. When we play arpeggios, um, I, I choose a D minor chord. We need to be very, very even with all the bow weights, so that not one note sticks out. I just need to demonstrate now, I'm running out of time, sorry. Very even over all strings. When we play chords, we have a lot of weight on the lower string, on the, on the bottom string, a lot of weight on the bottom note. We're digging in, D minor chord, and then release, and go soft to the top. The idea is that the bottom note carries throughout the whole uh, uh, chord process, uh, the whole chord. Can we do it together, please, after four, three, four. D minor chord, I think everybody can find the D minor, D, F, A, D, thank you, three, Four. And once more, please. With a big decrescendo, with a big rel, rel, uh, subtraction of weight. Uh, when we play semiquavers, we need to maintain the weight throughout the semiquavers, otherwise, we will lose the notes. Um, and then, of course, Messer Divoce, which I just uh, shortly touched. When we played the trill. Now I need to come to an end before we have perhaps another chance to ask some questions. I hope that I gave you some skills to get closer to the aim to play with more color in your notes, to more flexibility, to a more flexible playing, and to reach the full potential of your viol. I'm wishing you that you will reach the sensitivity in your arm, hand, fingers so that you can always adjust the weight to the sound you want to create. Every tone has one motion before and after. With the right amount of weight use, the sound can come from nothing to reach a beautiful center, just to disappear into nothing again, leaving a sweet or sad memory behind. So try to be so flexible with the way that you can um, achieve the sort of motions I just spoke about. Before I open the questions, I would like to just demonstrate uh, the beginning of the St. John's Passion Aria, where I use different bow weight in, in, in a melody, in slurring, in a trill, and in a chord.
thank you very much. Um, if you have a question, please, now is the time. Thank you very much to ask uh, if you have something to share. Hmm. Just that we need lots of practice. <laughs> yes, many years of uh, practice, but uh, the practice time can be joyful because you know what you will aim for, that you will be not surprised what comes out of, of your wild, that you can expect what comes out of your wild. <laughs> yes. I had a question about uh, changing the bow. When we're doing the double stops, when you change the bow, suddenly when you're uh, close to your hand, do you again apply the weight before starting the other way? Yes, I always start with the weight uh, adding uh, before I uh, play the note in the bow change. The trick is, or the, 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 the best way to do is not going too far into the extreme. Don't go where you can't have another two, two centimeters space to your hand or to the tip. Always leave some reserves. Then there is more flexibility and more softness possible, which you probably are looking for. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Hmm. Yes, anybody would like to ask another question otherwise? Yeah, yeah, yeah Jenny. Yes. Right. <laughs> Yes, thank you. I, I wonder about the actual choice of bow because different bows have different weights. Do, yeah. do you sometimes choose a different bow to play for different pieces of music because yes, of I, weight? Yes, I use different weights. I use different mm. hair as well. I use black hair if I have to produce. Uh, I mean, for French music, you often is uh, black hair mm. used. Uh, but I use black hair when I play in bigger groups because the black is rougher and you can produce a, a rougher sound just because of mm. the hair. Uh, but also the weight, uh, we have yeah, the French model, the English model, we have the fixed frog model. Uh, there are so many, many parameters we can uh, uh, yeah, weigh up. But at the end of the day, we need to work with what we have um, and um, learn the qualities of the stick and the hair we have in our hand. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you very much. I hope you are inspired to uh, explore the different weights and uh, looking forward to hear you one day on a course or in a lesson wherever we meet again. And it was a pleasure to work with you this evening. I wish you a very good evening and say good night. Thank you very much, Peter. Pleasure. Good night. Thank you for food for thought and well yeah. done for dealing with difficult um, camera and the dog and yes, uh, yes, yes. hosting as well. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> Thank you very much, Mary. All the best. Thank you. Goodbye. Thank, Thank you, you very much. Goodbye. Thank you. Oh, yeah. oh is it a beer, please?